This is, believe it or not, uh, well, maybe with a bit of a nudge, it's absolutely within the scope of what you can integrate as an advanced student, not even extension one. Watch as I use techniques that are completely from extension, sorry, completely from advanced and not from extension one. Just eyes up with me so you can see this because most of you have overcomplicated this quite dramatically. Okay. Knowing, and adv admittedly I'm giving you an advantage now that you didn't have before, knowing that you can integrate this as an advanced student, right? This dramatically narrows the number of things it could possibly be and therefore the path that you will put through this, right? For starters, it's a fraction. It's a fraction. Now, if you hand an integral to an advanced student and it has a fraction in it, um, it's one of two things. Either you can actually simplify out the fraction, so there's no more fraction anymore. It's like, oh, it's just a simple polynomial, just a simple trig function, and off you go, right? Or what is that other kind of function? We even talked about it when we were doing the intro, right? That we can deal with, and where does it lead in advanced? Logarithms, right? This is a rational function. Literally the only thing you can go to from an advanced point of view is a log. So I'm looking for some kind of f dash on f. Now, the last time I checked, 1 was not the derivative of x log x. I don't even know what the derivative of x log x is off the top of my head. But, don't fret, I can fairly effortlessly turn this into an f dash on f situation. What might be the useful f of x to choose? For n. 1 on x. I am going to choose f uh, 1 on x, but I don't think it's a useful f to choose. You're thinking of the, yeah, you're doing the next stop. So here's my f of x. Helpful to identify that first, because f dash is based on this guy, right? So I'm going to put that up the top here. Do you see how I split apart this fraction? Usually fractions on fractions, Usually fractions on fractions are worse, but in this case, we know what the derivative of log x is, it's 1 over x, and there, there's my f dash on f. I've got a definite integral, so I'll chuck in my big square brackets here. When you have f dash on f, what does it integrate into, generally speaking? Log of whatever that f of x is, right? Here is my f of x. I know it's a bit weird that it's a log itself, that's fine. It's log of, just to make it really, um, how does that black pen, red pen guy do it? I don't know how he does it. Um, that, that is the f that I put in there, so it's log of f of x, which in this case is log of log x. Are you okay with that? And from here, I almost feel like I would not like to do the rest of the question because you should be able to handle it. What do you think, Mrs. Lees? They usually got that bit. You usually got this bit. I'll do one extra line for you and then um, I will trust you to get to a solution. Um, just when I put this in, right, I'm going to get log of log of e squared. There's my upper bound. Right? Think about what's going to happen in here for a moment. Then I'm going to subtract my lower bound. This is log of log e. What's log of e? That's 1. What's log of 1? Zero. That's 0. Over here, a very similar thing happening, except you're going to, I mean, if you wanted to, right, just to make it exceptionally lazy, you could just, here, I really don't know how it does it. Um, I can take this power out here, make it a coefficient. So you're going to get log of 2 times 1. So you're log of 2. You're pretty much there. Make sense? Okay, that shouldn't have been too arduous. Let's have a look at the second one, which I would forgive you for finding a little bit more trouble, troublesome. Okay? Use the derivative of, um, and I've got this inverse trig function nestled inside a product, right? In order to work out this other result over here, or prove this other result. All right, for starters, let's call this question 2. Um, who can give me a derivative of x sine inverse? What do we got? Sine inverse of x. It's a plus, right? Yeah. Yep. And it's x on. There's our uv dash. You happy with that? Now, um, it was really interesting to me. Again, as an advanced technique, forget about the fact that this is inverse trig, because once you know that derivative, it just off it goes. What you're about to do now is an advanced method, right? When you know a derivative, you can use this as a stepping stone to an integral. What's the thing they want you to integrate? It's, it's sine inverse of x, this guy right here, right? So in order to get to the integral of sine inverse of x, what I should do is take this line and just integrate everything, right? Um, then that will give me the integral right in the middle, and I've just got to sort out what's happening on the left and right hand sides, okay? So let's go ahead and give that a whirl. I'm going to start in here because this is the part that I know that I want. What are my boundaries? 
Zero, zero and a half, right? Zero and a half. So here comes my definite integral, right? So that's the part that I want. And now I've got this other stuff that I don't want. Now, over here on the right hand side, I've still got the same kind of, whoops, wrong one. The same kind of thing happening over here. It's another definite integral, right? The only thing that's different, what you have to be careful with, is this over here. We're about to integrate a derivative. Integrate a derivative. So where's that going to send us back to? This, this original function, right? Except what we're doing on the right hand side is, is definite. It has boundaries, right? So when you go back to integrate this thing, you end up with, well, a definite integral, just like you had before, right? And this bit's a bit unfamiliar. It's the least familiar part of this, but it's totally doable, right? We can manage this, right? Let me give you a bit of a nudge. Upper bounds. Half times what? Sine inverse of a half, which is pi on 6. Happy times. Upper bound done. Lower bound done. No worries. What do I do with this integral in here? Sweet nothing. It's exactly what I want it to be. So I'm just going to write it as is. But this term on the right hand side, this might take a little more massaging. Um, what am I going to do with this thing? Uh, I will put in my zero and my half here. I'll leave out the front for a second. Okay. How can I write this helpfully? What do you think? Think back to your advanced and extension one toolkit. Say it again. Yeah, so if I put this into an exponential form, get a power in there, we're pretty good at dealing with polynomials like that, right? So I'm going to have an x and a 1 minus x squared to the power of a half, like so. I haven't done any integration, right? All I'm doing here, by the way, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with this term, you should jot it down now because it's going to be useful. All I've done is I have manipulated the integrand. That's the name of the thing being integrated, right? Uh, Sorry, thank you very much. It's on the denominator. I have manipulated the form of the thing that's being integrated to make it more convenient to me. Okay? Now you notice I left off some things, and that's because whilst I'm doing this, I think I can make this even easier for myself. right? This is reverse chain rule, or it will be in a second. So I want some kind of f dash f situation. Yeah? I'm almost there. How do I need to change it? Yeah, that minus 2x will do it, which means that to compensate, over here I should have a minus a half. So that's balanced out. Is that okay? And just to be really neat, I probably should put that in brackets. Okay, does that make sense? Now, I'm going to pause there because from here, think about where I need to go, right? What's this equal to? Pi on 12. Is that promising? You bet it is, right? This is pretty much what I need, right? Uh, this is the term that I want. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add this, whatever it ends up being, to both sides. It'll end up over here with the integral that I'm... I'm after, okay? Who's got a finished result? Hands up. A few of you, uh, about a third. Okay, I'll give you some time to go on. Those of you who have your hands up, you can continue on in 4A. These questions are both from 4A. I'll give you guys a bit of time and then I will show you what my solution looks like in about three minutes. Okay, I only wanted to give you a few minutes just because I knew a third of you were ready to go in 4A, but for the two thirds of you who I just gave you your breathing room to finish this off, I'm not quite there as you can see, but I'm so very close, let's make sure we do it together because I think there are still quite a few twists and turns in this. Um, so let me show you how I've done it. This is the line I left you at. So what have I changed? Well, on the left-hand side, with your help, I've written this as pi on 12. This term remains unchanged because it's the thing I'm actually after. What's going on here over on the right-hand side? This negative or minus a half rather, it's out the front. That came from me adjusting the integrand so that it would look really nice. It had an f dash and an f to a certain power. And then what have I done? Well, this is reverse chain rule in here, right? I've increased the power by one, so it's gone from just watch out fractions, negatives, everything can possibly go wrong. Even Morgan was the one who pointed out I forgot to write the minus sign in the first instance. You add one, gives you positive a half. But then after increasing the power, just like with all advanced integration, you divide by that power. That's why I've awkwardly written it as 2 over 1, even though you're like, why do that, right? To remind you that this is where that comes from. I've divided by the new power, so that's why it's upside down. From here, you can see I thought, well, I don't need to keep on writing this together mixed in with the other stuff. I want to make this the subject. So you can see it's sort of come in here, 
on its own. It's still on the right hand side because I'm doing too many things. I just know what myself is like. Um, I'm going to overload my brain switching this to one side and also manipulating this side. So that's why I've added this to both sides. Um, but do notice, right? Some nice cancelling has happened. It's almost like the question was designed to do this, right? So that minus a half, which I had out the front, it's gone. Um, why is this a plus? Wasn't it minus before? Look carefully. Why is it a plus, Susie? Yeah, it was on the right hand side. So really what I've done is I've added it to both sides, hence it being a plus over here, right? We know, right? This, all the hard stuff, we as extension two students, we get, and then we get tripped up by a sign, okay? Um, I've gone back to, this is one minus x squared to the power of a half. I've gone back to square root notation because I only got it into exponent form, as Tarun suggested, for what purpose? Why, why did I write it like this? It's so I could integrate, right? But I'm done with that. I'm done. This I can now do um, in my mind a lot more easily. And now let's tidy this up and uh, get all the loose ends. I'm, gonna, I'm ready to switch sides now, so I'll pop this 0 to a half here. And then on the right hand side, I have the plan 12 that I wanted, right? I'm now adding, okay, just be careful. This is a show question, remember? So no skipped steps of logic. What's going to come in here? Can you help me do the upper bound? Help me out, guys. Sean, give me a, give me a first step. Oh, um, one minus, yeah, uh, Yep, I reckon we can go to the next one. Yeah, that's okay. Then right, then so there's half uh, Are you happy with that? Yeah. This is, this is show, right? I think this step is an easy one to skip, but we're so close to the very end here. You, it is worth putting in there, right? Um, you've got your pi on 12. You've got your square root of three quarters. We're so very close, right? And then you've got your minus one. And from here, the last line you write is the line that was the result that was required of you. Make sense? What makes this challenging, I think, is you have so much extra in your brain from what you're used to. This is all advanced in extension one, really. So get used to this being um, the ground floor. My favorite comparison metaphor for this is um, Mount Everest base camp is at 2,000 meters. Base camp is at 2,000 meters. Does anyone know how tall Kosciuszko is? It's, it's, it's just under, it's just under 2,000 meters, right? So where the extension one course ends, that's where we begin in the same way that where Australia ends, Everest starts, okay? We're gonna have fun in this topic, but you're gonna have to work hard and be careful with it.